Today we're going to talk through how to apply and spray spar varnish. We'll start by talking through the characteristics of spar varnish and why you might want to pick that type of wood finisher as opposed to a couple of others. Then we'll move into how the process of how to spray it on your wood piece and then we'll actually demonstrate and show you the spar varnish being sprayed and going on. If you like this video and you like the content that we're making, please feel free to hit the like button. It helps us quite a bit. Subscribe for future videos. All right, so spar varnish. Let's talk through the characteristics of spar varnish first and my, why you might want to pick spar varnish as opposed to a couple of other types of wood finishers. Now, probably the most common, more heavy duty, more robust wood finishes you're going to find on the market would be any type of varnish and a type of polyurethane, okay? Well, now, why do we pick spar varnish specifically? But we'll start with why we picked varnish as opposed to a polyurethane or something else. So polyurethane is a great wood finish and it, it provides a very protective wood seal. The problem is, is that it does not allow for a lot of flexibility with the wood and we're gonna talk through why that's so important. Polyurethane is a great wood finish when you are using it on an indoor type of surface. So think hardwood floors, think furniture, uh, potentially think wood cabinets in your kitchen. This is great because what polyurethane does is it actually puts a coat, a, almost like a very rigid, thick, stiff coat over top of the wood that you're finishing. So almost think of it like a thin piece of plastic. And what that does is it provides a great, great seal and protects the wood, but it does not really work well when there's temperature changes, moisture changes, or, or precipitation changes, okay? And the reason is because when there is temperature change and volatility, or when there's moisture change in the air and volatility, the wood needs to expand and contract. Wood expands as it heats up, it contracts as it cools down. Wood expands as it gains moisture, it contracts as it loses moisture. Indoors, not a big deal. Typically pretty temperature controlled inside your home, not gonna fluctuate and swing too much. And so polyurethane is a great finish. However, outdoors, polyurethane when applied is gonna crack and get very, very brittle. It's not gonna hold up over time. Moisture is gonna work its way into those cracks and it's going to ruin the wood on the inside. What we need to use instead is a varnish. Varnish is different in the way that it applies. It seeps in rather than going over top of. You won't notice it necessarily as you apply it, but that's the characteristic of varnish. And therefore varnish is a much better wood finish for outdoor environments when you're gonna have temperature changes, moisture, these types of the elements. Now, spar varnish is a really, really, really hardy type of varnish. It's the best way that I know how to put it. It's used really most often in marine settings, but it can also be used in environments like what we're talking about here today. So think about a boat with some wood on it. The boat is constantly getting pounded with water and salt and wind and sun and rain and just getting battered, right? It's probably the most harsh environment for wood to exist in. And so spar varnish is the varnish and it is the finisher of choice for those types of environments. Uh, as a result, a lot of us who finish wood uh, and wood projects like these chairs and know they're gonna be out in the elements and getting beaten down, choose spar varnish as well. So these are some Adirondack chairs that we've made. We do have a video on the process we went through to make them if you're interested. We built them out of cedar and redwood. Then we went ahead and filled in with wood filler the, uh, the, the, the holes in the pockets. We sanded the whole thing down and then we sprayed a Minwax stain on it. And the final step to get this out and into the, uh, onto the patio is to put a wood finisher on. Now you're gonna to wanna to put a wood finisher on if you want these things to last. Now, if you don't really care too much, maybe it's just a really quick job, you can uh, skip this step. But over the course of a couple of years, as the sun and the wind and the rain, uh, let's be honest, the wind isn't that big of a deal. It just it comes out every time I say sun and rain. But the sun, the rain, the snow, precipitation, frost, sitting in water, all of those things, it's gonna pretty quickly start to ruin the wood. It's gonna fade in coloring, it's gonna get worn down, and the wood's gonna start to, 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 to become deteriorated. So we wanna apply a finish to it, and the finish of choice for us today, and the finish of choice I recommend for outdoor products, outdoor wood finish, uh, outdoor wood applications like chairs, or fences, or pergolas, these kinds of things, tables, spar varnish is really great. So we've talked about why spar varnish and the characteristics of spar varnish. Let's now talk about applying the spar varnish. Now you can brush on a varnish, and if you have a small 
or really, uh, really, just a really basic or small uh, uh, piece of wood, this, you know, brushing on works just fine. We actually have a video where we brushed on varnish to finish off a swing set that was going outdoors. And the swing set's pretty basic, right? It's like, you know, a couple posts. And so we just quickly applied it. We didn't get out our sprayer and we showed you how to apply it with a brush if you want. I included a, a little a little card there. You can you can jump over to that video. But for something like these chairs, where we've got first off a lot of them, we got we got a couple chairs, we got a bench, we've got a table. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot to do, and a lot of nooks and crannies, a lot of edge work, a lot of changing and varying angles. For those reasons, spraying is going to be a lot quicker and probably going to give you a much more even coat. Whereas with a brush, you're going to be uh, applying it at different, uh, you know, different amounts in different areas. So we're going to choose a sprayer for these types of situations. Uh, I have here a very basic sprayer. I mean, I'm telling you, this is a very, very basic HVLP sprayer. It uh, HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. It's the type of sprayer that you want to use. You can use this sprayer for paint. You can use it for wood finishes. You can use it for stain, um, like we did here. Now, when we stained these chairs. Um, in the other video, we used a different HVLP sprayer. It was a little bit more robust, had a little bit more characteristics on it. For this type of a finish, we just chose to get out the very basic one. This is a very affordable one you can buy. We'll include a link um, to our preferred budget HVLP sprayer in the, uh, in the show notes there. But um, uh, you're going to want to get out your HVLP sprayer and utilize that to apply your varnish or really whatever wood finish you want. The steps you go by to apply, and then we'll walk through them in, in kind of more specifically, is first you're going to want to fill the container with the varnish or the finisher, the varnish in this case. The second thing is you're going to want to set your, um, your, your, your type of application, the spray. Uh, third is you're going to want to uh, uh, set the volume, and then you're good to go. Those are the three steps. Step four is actually applying the varnish itself. So let's talk through each of those steps. Step one is to fill your container. And that might seem pretty simple. In some cases, you just unscrew it and you just get your varnish out and you apply it. In other cases, though, you're going to need to thin down the finish before you can apply it. The good news is that for the vast majority of these uh, finishers, it's going to tell you what to do on the actual, app, uh, the actual uh, uh, finish itself. And sure enough, on the back here, set that down. Uh, on the back here, it says coverage and thinning. One gallon covers approximately 450 to 550 square feet. So this is a gallon, and that gives you an idea. It's also sold in quartz. Going to be cheaper by the gallon. Um, and for the types of projects we have going on around here, a gallon pretty much always makes sense for us. Um, do not thin. And so this product does not need to be thinned. Some products are thicker. And as a result, they have a hard time going through the sprayer and you need to thin them down a bit. We don't go in this video into how to thin, but we do have a video on thinning wood stain. And you can also find other information on how to thin these types of finishers. So once you have your finisher poured into here, which we'll do here in a little bit, you screw it on. You make sure that you attach the corresponding nozzle. I had it filled with water earlier to, get the, uh, to test the sprayer out. Next is adjusting the spray itself. Now this can be a little bit confusing until you get used to it. So let's talk about this. Basically, whichever uh, direction the spray uh, is pointed, it's going to do the opposite or a 90 degree version of the spray. So let me give you an example. This is a horizontal orientation. And so you're gonna get a vertical spray. When would you wanna use a vertical spray? Well, when you're going side to side across the wood piece. So for maybe for cabinets or um, something that you have a big um, kind of vertical stretch on, you'll want to do vertical sprays. If you want to do vertical sprays, you want horizontal orientation. On the opposite, when you have a vertical orientation, you're going to get a horizontal spray. And that works well when you're going up and down. Uh, up and down, I find works best when you're working over a wood piece. But really, it just depends on the orientation of the specific piece of wood that you're doing. So for this piece of wood right here, I would probably go up and down across it. Whereas with these pieces here, I would probably go side to side, right? And so for this one, I'm going to get a, whoops, <laughs> I went all the way. For this one, I'm going to get a vertical spray, which I think would work really well for these types of pieces. And with this, I'm going to get a horizontal spray, which I think would work really well for these types of pieces. The good news is you'll pick it up very quickly as you go. 
And so don't be afraid to practice a bit on either a spare piece of wood or if you really want, you can probably pick it up pretty quickly even while you're working with your piece of wood. So the final, uh, by the way, there is a angle or a 45 degree angle and that's gonna be for a circle spray. Circle spray works well when you're not working with a big piece of wood but just maybe a little area and you don't wanna have overspray either to the left and right or to the up and down. Circle spray is gonna be best for those smaller areas. So once you have your orientation dialed in, and by the way, you're more than welcome to adjust as you go. So, uh, well, not as you're spraying, but spray a section and then adjust it, spray a different section, adjust it, spray a different section. So uh, that's, uh, that's something you can, you can work with as you're working over the wood piece, and I'll be doing as well. I'll be changing it as I spray this. Last is the volume, um, and depending on your sprayer, and depending on what you're using, what type of finish you're using, you're going to want this either wide open or dialed back. The more dialed back you go, the less spray, the less uh, substance you're going to get to your spray. Uh, I will tell you that having done this, it's a little hard sometimes to determine the difference between having uh, a high volume versus a low volume amount of the substance going onto it. Um, so uh, just be careful if you have it uh, dialed back and you're not allowing a lot of it to come out, you're probably going to want to put on a couple coats. Don't be fooled into thinking that you might have gotten a lot out the first time around. but um, that might be smart to do if you have a lot of overspray happening because you have an intricate wood piece that has a lot of nooks and crannies and turns and twists and all that. So you might want to actually opt for a lighter spray and, and to do it multiple passes. Okay, so that walks us through the process of how to set this all up. And now I'm going to go ahead and get to spraying and show you how the spraying is done. And here we are after the first coat of spar varnish has been applied. You'll see it's got a definite sheen going for it now, a shine, if you will. And remember, we applied a semi-gloss to this finish uh, as the spar varnish is concerned. And so the semi-gloss is going to have a little bit more of a shine than if you went with like a, a matte look. But it's also got less of a shine than if you went with a full gloss. But there's definitely a shine to it. That shine is going to get knocked down over time as it's out and exposed to the elements. But you can see that there's definitely um, got a gloss to it. You can definitely tell that a coat has been applied to this of this of the spar varnish. Now, a couple of things about the spar varnish when you apply it. It's going to take, I found, about four to six hours to the touch when it's dry to the touch. Uh, probably, honestly, a day or two before it's fully cured and fully dried. That's what the uh, information says, and that's certainly what we're seeing. They're still putting off a little bit of a smell. And in addition, if you want to put on several coats, you're going to want to sand this down a bit. Not much, and you're going to want to be very careful. So wait 24 to 48 hours before you sand it down so that it's fully dried. And then you can tell that it's very shiny and a little bit sticky. And so what you're trying to do when you sand down in between coats is just take off any of the imperfections, any of the bubbles that might have formed, any areas where some dirt or dust might have gotten dropped in, you're not trying to really take off much. You do not want to sand down and take off any of the actual coating. You just want to remove the imperfections. And so you're going to use like a 220 grit sandpaper if that's what you want to do. I'm probably going to put on a second coat just because I can see that there's some areas where it went on thicker and then some areas where it went on kind of thinner. Hard to show in this video but you can tell when you're looking at a product, especially as you look at it into the light, you can tell areas where it went on thicker. And so I just wanna even that out. So what I'll do is I'll just apply some 220 sandpaper very lightly, wait 24 to 48 hours after uh, applying the first coat and then apply a second coat. And that's how you apply and use spar varnish for your furniture. Looking forward to seeing these out in the open and uh, getting lots of great use out of them. Hope you enjoyed this again if you liked what you saw, we'd love it if you hit the like button, helps us out a lot, and subscribe for future updates. Thanks so much.